you to decide what you want to be. It is not when you have finished the course or it is when not when you have gone to do more further studies. Next. And uh, I had uh, talked about that. Some of the people who inspired me was Dr. Grace Nambatia, who is the director of Natural Chemotherapeutics Research Laboratory, and uh, Professor Guang, who happens to be my head of department at Mbarara University of Science and Technology, and who has done great work in natural products development, especially in the pharmaceutical world. And uh, after graduating, I went to National Water and Sewage Corporation to work. But later, I realized there was something that was still coming on my mind, which was natural products development. Every time I passed on uh, traditional medicine practitioners, I still wanted to know, is natural medicine medicine or witchcraft? And there was a need for scientists to come up and put the gap and show where does witchcraft separate from medicine? How comes if you pick chinchona from Congo, you take it to German, then it comes back as, uh, as quinine tablet or ampu, then it is now no longer witchcraft. So I needed to establish where is the boundary. And this was not simple work. That's how I was interacting with the Professor Guang, Dr. Grace Nambatia, Dr. Sekaja. And I took time to go and meet with most of these traditional medicine practitioners. In the particular field where you are interested, you will have to go and visit the practitioners. They may not be professionals, but when they are in the practice, then you still need their knowledge for you to be able to succeed. And in my interaction with most of these uh, traditional medicine practitioners, I happened to learn a lot about the beliefs, traditions, and practices of natural medicine. And I was able to realize that most of these medicines were really medicine. Traditional medicine was medicine, but partly being demonized by the practitioners themselves. And there needed to be work to be done on this so that we could standardize traditional medicine and it becomes medicine. It was not easy because by then, the only guideline on anyone practicing natural medicine was being uh, guided by the, tradition, by the witchcraft beer. So that meant anybody in research, whether uh, Professor Guang, who was practicing there before 1919, uh, before, 19, uh, to, before 2019, when the government had to sign the complementary medicine and traditional medicine bill, even a professor who was engaged in traditional medicine development was a witch. So that's how the whole journey w w was traumatizing. And on your journey to pursue entrepreneurship, you will meet such specific challenges where sometimes you will be classed in specific terms, but if you know what you are pursuing, you will not give up. And uh, I, I had to leave Kampara, resign on my job. That was in 2002 and came back to the village. And that's how I even lost my girlfriend because she had had, I had joined the business of the witch doctors. And she chucked me. Lucky enough, a year later, I met the most beautiful lady, Madame Tkwasive Ivas, who is uh, the managing director for Kazire Group. And I'm with her up to today with three children, with six children, three boys and uh, three girls. So, on your journey to pursue your dream, you will lose some friends and you may lose support even of your relatives. So, but you need to know the journey you are on. So, it may not be very easy 
and don't think everybody will clap for your pursue for your dream very few may understand you so be prepared for that too so when i went back to the village my mother and my parents expected me like any other graduate coming from kampara to come with a big bag bread but i came back with my small bag and they were asking me, how do you leave Kampara, the center of business and money, and you are coming back to the village? On greeting me, how I said, I'm fine. But internally in me, I was not fine. Because there was a sound ringing. I needed to know what I was to pursue, to have peace in my mind and in my heart. And what is important in your career is peace. So I needed to get that peace. That morning... I went to church and I prayed because it was my routine because I gave my life to Jesus in 1999 when I was uh, in, in year one. And this you must understand that if you are to be a very strong entrepreneur, you must know you are a creator. Every day you want to create. And you cannot be a creator without connection and power of the big God who is the father of creation. So, sometimes you have to pray. You have to, to, to meditate so that you can get visions. Because every business starts as a dream. And a dream you begin taking pictures in your mind. And as you sleep, you see certain things. And the spirit of God will be also guiding you in this. Remember, I happened to do a lot of research in spiritualism. People will work with the demonic world and frustrate your future. I need you to understand this too. So, that's how I made a decision to take a strong decision about my spiritualism. And note, if in any Indian, any Chinese who are very serious in business, they will not begin running their businesses before they undergo specific rituals. So they are calling on, on the spiritual powers. So understand that business is both physical and spiritual. So this you must understand. You will start your small business, people will bewitch it, and you will lose your money. Not because you are not knowledgeable, not because you are not talented, not because you cannot succeed, but because there is both, it is both spiritual and physical. At Kazire, you cannot start running our machinery or anything, even at these logistics. You cannot start vehicles, even at castrans, without reciting the rosary. And it is a tradition. It is a spiritual tradition known there. And every Wednesday, there is a sacrifice of mass in the factory. Whether you are a Muslim, whether you are a Protestant, you must follow the spiritual tradition of the business. Then, at these logistics, it's every Friday. And in other businesses, there is when they have to do some demonic sacrifices. So, business, be prepared, both physical and spiritual. Because we are co-creators with God. We have to keep having that power beyond what our bodies can run. Because I'm taking you through the journey that I have gone through. I know there are certain things I would not achieve if I was not strong spiritually. Because there are certain systems you will try to penetrate and you will be blocked. But because you can only block my body, but you can't block my spirit. So some of the works, I, 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 I achieve them spiritually. I will come, a secretary will block me from entering the office. I will sit, I do a prayer. I, I, I begin a communication with the CEO whom I want to see. I begin a communication with the minister whom I want to see. And the minister will feel uncomfortable in his seat. While you're moving out, he will find me seated. He will say, hey, sir, we had an appointment. I will say, I was being delayed here. And I will be made to go. So you can limit my body, but you will not limit my spirit. So that's why you must know. To be strong entrepreneurs, you must be strong spiritually. This I have tested in the whole different parts of the world. It doesn't matter which spiritualism you are breathing in. Whether you are a Catholic like me, I'm even a catechist of the Catholic Church, having understood that there was bigger power 
in believing Jesus because I had tested how the demonic world also operates. But when you would say Jesus, the demons would run. So I said I can't associate with a weak spirit. That's how I ended up taking that journey. So be prepared. You need to pray all the time for your business, day and morning, as you think about it. So that's how innovation now explodes. Because every time you can even see challenges before they happen to attack your business. So that's why even on my first morning of chasing my dream, I had to be at church. And I prayed. After receiving Jesus in the Eucharist, I prayed. And he never talked to me. He kept quiet. I went home. While I was seated at the veranda, I was taken like in, in some slight sleep. My eyes were looking at a eucalyptus tree in front of our house. That's the power. People who innovate, you have to have the power of, of, of uh, the power of, of concentration. So while you're looking at the tree, I, 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 I moved into the leaf of the tree. My mind shifted. You can see a tree is a big thing. You can look at the stem. I would be looking at timber in the stem. I would look at the, the branches, maybe for firewood. I would look maybe at the leaves, maybe for marching. Maybe the seeds for going to replant. But now my mind took me inside the leaf to look at the chemistry of the leaf. And I was seeing uh, eucalyptus grebulus oil. I would see its uh, fractions. I would see the menthol. I would see the comfort. And immediately my mind roared. I remembered a very unique and very effective cough syrup contained eucalyptus grebulus oil. And this was a moment for me as a chemist to begin. Now, it was about me to decide whether to wait when I have billions of money to buy a huge strong fractionating unit or to decide at that moment and use the available resources in within my limits to start. While you're still contemplating about that, someone passed carrying a rock or drum going to the river to distill ethanol from Tonto. Now, I'm here, a graduate of chemistry, thinking about huge distillation unit of billions of money. But someone is here practicing the chemistry. The, the science is the same. What is different is the methods and the materials in, within the process. But the science and chemistry is the same. It's just the difference in the, in, the, in, the, in the evaporation points. So, here the guy moves. I look at him like this. My mind followed him. Then I realized that was an evening when I needed also to go and distill eucalyptus oil from the eucalyptus leaves. While I was seated there, then I immediately got up. I was like from that dream. And I saw the, the man put, moving on with the bicycle. And I realized this is the reality I have to take on. And that morning I quickly moved, picked, entered the house, picked the bag. I went to the next uh, forest where there were eucalyptus leaves. It was uh, my uncle's plantation. Then I began picking them. As I moved back home, carrying that bag, to prepare to hire a drum. Not to buy a drum, by the way. You do not need to own every equipment you use. That's why Yuri is here. Yuri owns equipment. But every person who wants to use that equipment for a career process will use it and make money. You don't need to own your equipment to make business for, with it. So that's what happened for me in that morning. Because I only had 20,000 shillings. And I needed to utilize that money to make sure I get a product and a business starting. So, it, and I think by then, that was like 70,000. Even if it was, say, 100,000 in value by then. Imagine now, you have 100,000 in your pocket and all of you have capacity to raise it today. And the only challenge is... 
This is the only thing you have and you must use it to have your business kick start. So you must begin planning how to apportion it. So I could not buy a drum and I lose all my capital. No. I decided to go and hire a drum. And went, I distilled, got my first extract. Immediately, I realized I did not have a fractionating column. So, I ne and I cannot spend all my capital to buy one. I had to go back to Makere University and borrow from the lab. And I went there, I talked to the laboratory technician, he helped me, I separated. I don't need to own the university lab to do my, to do my work and proceed. So immediately, after getting my pure extract, I carried it in the small bottle. I passed at the Afroplastics. It was in Rosira by then. I bought the, the packaging bottles. I got on the bus again, back to Kunjiri. Now, I never had money for the honey. So what I did was to go to Muzei Nkuna, may his uh, soul rest in peace, and he gave me five liters of honey on credit based on the credit of my father and my grandfather who were known to be honest people in society. How have you lived in society is capital for yourself. It matters a lot. So immediately, he gave me the honey, I mixed with the, with the oil immediately, a portion put in small bottles, and that Monday, I was in Kemison Market. I said, you degree of chemistry, you have to stay home, leave me to go and join other local business people in the market. So do not be proud about your certificate, about your degree, about your what. What is important? The business. If you want to be an entrepreneur. There's when you have to stop, the, to put down the pride and keep moving. So that's how I ended up in Kemson Market and I was on the roadside with other people who were selling their hubs. And I was also there saying, you can have a test on mine. And whoever tested on my product, remember, I was a professional. It was highly standardized. Everybody got healed. And the word of mouth spread. There is a small boy here who can do, produce some good medicine. Remember, I was known in the village because I used to go to church. I, ha I was popular in Catholic charismatic groups. Even when I would come to holidays, even when I was a university student, I, a student, I would go to church. So when you go back to the villages, where do you associate with those people doing betting who have nothing to spend or with elders of the community so they can trust you. You must build that. Community support is an investment and is a form of capital for you. So that's how the community received me very quickly. And people knew I was now at home. And it was that day that I made 50000 the first moment in my life. And immediately I went paid back the honey. I went paid the guy of the drum and paid all my suppliers and paid even my grandfather Musei Mujen who had supported me the whole night while we distilled. I also paid him. And the remaining money was profit which I reinvested. And the cycle continued until when many people came in now ask, talking about different ailments. That's when I had to go back and read properly the books, especially uh, Pharmacogonus by Tress and Evans, which, which is a book of the knowledge of medicinal plants. So I had to go and read it now to understand various France for various ailments now, not for only getting marks in class and scores. So, there is knowledge which, there is a way people learn today. They are only reading a lot to cram and, uh, and memorize so that they get scores. But this was a moment to read, understand, to solve the problem. That's the difference between an entrepreneur 
and a schooling person. So we must now differentiate between learning, education, and schooling. They are now totally different. So, now I developed, the next formula I developed was arsenic. Actually, knock of which was my first product, is now Vidicin, a product which is now on its last stages of clinical trials at the Moragolang Institute. It's being uh, uh, run by Professor Chirenga, and it is supported by the government of Uganda, the Science, Technology, and Innovation Secretariat in the President's office. Now, a product that began 20, more than 20 years ago, I've been struggling with it, but today it is being worked on at the highest level because after a clinical trial, a product can be prescribed and it can be exported. So, the journey is not a call for a rush, but for consistent, small, small development. That is the Kaizen principle. It's a Japanese way of doing business. So you may not start class A today. Because to run a clinical trial, you need more, not less than a billion. I, cannot, I could not fund it by then. But it, I would not wait until when government can recognize my work so that I be able to start. Start now with what you have. Another one, Arsanet, which was my next formula, is already today notified by NDA. And I developed it through the support of Mbarra University. It is called Arsaton. It is already notified by National Drug Authority. It can now go to pharmacies. But if I had wanted to wait until when I'm recognized to be an official partner with a, a big national university, hey, I don't know where you would be. So start now with what you have. So we can go to, to the next slide. So after people kept visiting me home, I had now to shift to the next town to hire. So growth is continuous. And from there, in 2006, I, had, I, I reached Mbarara in 2004, and I realized there was a gap between what the international teams were doing in natural medicine development with what I was doing. So that's how I had to go to China to pursue more knowledge on how to standardize natural medicine. It was not a simple decision. I remember I had to sell the plot which I had bought from the savings of my work of two years from 2004 to 2006. And I had just married my wife. We had one child. And it was not easy. It was betting. That was a moment when I really had to take a, a big decision. I sold and left. Heading to a country where I, I never knew the language, but to be a strong entrepreneur, you must take high risks at the moment. There are moments when you have to take a risk. So I took a risk. But reaching there, by the end of my training, I had amassed knowledge and they had realized I had great skills that one of the industries wanted to retain me. You will reach a moment when they may want to take you up. But first think about it. Is it what you are going to sell yourself for? What your dream? Are you still looking at your dream? So, I realized I had gone to China to get more knowledge, not to get more money. So I said, with your money, it's okay. Give me a chance. I need to go to talk to my family and think about it and come back. But I knew it was a polite way of saying, I want to go home. So I left and that's how I came back to Uganda to make sure that I industrialize herbal medicine. And in 2008, I remember in 2007, I began mobilizing. That's how I got that plot there. And it was still a bush and a, a, a thick forest and people laughed, said, this man who is isolating himself here, how will he 
uh, bring up this place. But now, today when you pass every side of the road, now there are industries. There has to be someone to take a step to change and transform a specific village, a specific point in the country, a specific nation. There has to be someone to move out and take a step to transform it. So it doesn't matter what the state is, but if you take a step there, when you step there today, you will cause a transformation in the next years. So, and I began construction, and I think by 2008, we were bringing in the first machinery. Remember, when I talk about relationships and your character, they are big capital. My first equipment, I never had enough money to pay for it. But because I had built great relationships with the, some Chinese in China, they allowed to give me machinery so that I install, I work as I pay them. And someone is saying, I don't have capital. What do you want? Be specific. Do you want the paper? Or you want materials to make you move? So, that's how I got the first equipment. And from there, we have grown continuously. And I can get any equipment, even if it is $2 million from my partners in China. Because they trust me. With the first equipment which they gave me, which was about $30,000, I kept paying, finished it, asked for a bigger machine as my market was growing and continuously. Continuously, continuously, even if I want now a $5 million unit equipment, they will give me because I've been consistent. Relationships. Keep clean relationships. If someone gives you the ground nuts today, you roast them. Pay them. They will give you more kilos. If they had given you 10 kilograms, they will give you 20. From 20, they will give you 30. They will talk to their friends. You will find by the end of the day, you can even correct a turn without money. But money is in what you are. They, they have given you. Your relationship is your check. Is, 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 your relationship is your guarantee. Is your bank guarantee. And you can make it. So, as I speak today, the company which started as one has produced other companies. We can move to the next slide. Now, we have Kazir Health Products, which is producing health beverages. And it also has a research department uh, where we work with the Mbarra University of Science and Technology. We work with the NARO and uh, the communities to make sure that we improve uh, uh, the, 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 the raw material flow, we improve the standardization of the products. We are able to test our products now at a molecular level because the university has a lot of equipments, has a lot of professors, has a lot of technocrats. So whatever I want to test on my product, I'm able to test it because of, of such a collaboration. Then, uh, um, we also have now Kazire Pharmaceuticals Company Limited. This is now majorly handling pharmaceutical drugs. And I've started this company having realized that some of the traditional medicine practitioners with very good medicine really may never meet the standards required to have a manufacturing license for drugs. So now this company is going to be doing uh, partnerships with people who have their products, contract manufacturing, but they don't have equipment and the technology, the science needed. So we will be there for them. They bring in, we help them in contract manufacturing so that they can, we can have standard drugs on the market. Because even if we do not support them, people will still go for them. And they, they will take medicine which is not standardized. And they will still get sick. So we have not supported the, 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 the vision for the government to have safe, efficacious drugs for everyone. So the shortcut, let me have this company do contract manufacturing for 
these traditional medicine practitioners who cannot meet the standards needed by the regulator. Then I have already shared why, how this logistics came up. And we also have Kaz Trans Company Limited that is helping us in engineering solutions, fleet management, industrial maintenance, uh, engineering innovations. Because we realized you cannot sustainably grow if you are not using technology. So I needed a, a, a technology company that is going to support us for the sustainable growth and development of the company. Next. We have uh, a very strong division in agriculture. It's called Kazira Agriculture. And this, remember, 90% of most of the things we are using are agricultural inputs. So if we do not think on how to integrate the communities to do mass production for us, then it would require the company to go for a big investment in doing mass production. I don't know if you get me. It means if I don't invest in the masses, many people to produce smaller volumes for me to feed the factory, now I need a lot of money to go and buy big pieces of land, fight with squatters, then the company is trying to produce massively for itself.
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, we have about five minutes, then we shall come here and present. Yes, we have five minutes, then we come here and present. So you are going to present your problem and three ideas you have for the solution. They eat the unhealthy materials, they cause like cancer. So that's the problem you are identifying in the education sector. So we as young entrepreneurs, we are doing something to better the unhealthy materials like chalk. What are we going to do? We are going to supply other materials that the school is currently using but are not sufficient, like the whiteboards and the whiteboard markers. We will be the suppliers of those materials in school. So we shall be going door to door, uh, school to school, supplying the materials. Two, for the insufficient materials to be used in school, say the papers to be used in assessment. For we as young entrepreneurs, we shall do what we shall do is selling the materials to the school. And also advising the school to do the what? To include those materials in the circulars of students. So that, that we who are producing the materials can get market for those materials. Say the papers, the rims that we'll be producing. Thank you. Thank you. Clap for him. So how many ideas do you have? One is supplying... That, mm -hmm. So you're going to make papers. Make papers and supply other materials to the school. Okay. Let's clap for them. Uh, next, uh, transports. Transport sector, uh, tell us your problem and tell us the solutions you're thinking about. The problem we had in yesterday was the failure to pay border, border guys after the passengers reach their destinations. Now the solutions that we, me and my colleague had 
was that like we can introduce eh, the safe, another safe local border like in Kampala they have like safe borders but for us in Barara we can really introduce a safe border up and we we manage to transport the and we remove that program of 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 border border riders eh? of passengers not in, uh, no, not not getting their taxes another solution was in introducing tickets maybe at the stages of border borders yeah if we can introduce tickets and we like cooperate with the border border guys at the stages eh? and the the customer comes pay for pay, pay us and we introduce that ticket and the border border catch and the border border transport the passengers to their destinations and register after after reaching their destination and register to that to that ticket seller yes thank you do you have another solution you want to tell us only two solutions so he's saying they can come up with an application like safe border but with a different model and can solve the problems in Barara. He said they are also trying to come up with a ticketing system uh, to introduce tickets for border border. Our next sector, agriculture, agriculture poultry. Good afternoon to everybody. I'm representing agriculture poultry. So our core problem was diseases. So poultry diseases. Uh, and the way how we can solve diseases is just vaccinating Bef after two weeks. After hatching of the chicks, then two weeks you vaccinate. Then in this way, so I think I have to bring the solution which can help me earn some money. So I think I can make the vaccine for vaccination. When I supply it, then I can be making some money. That's all. So you came up. Uh, we found that this idea can be the best, the one of making vaccines. Yeah. And did you have other ideas? You are doubting on them. Just tell us the ideas. Don't doubt any idea at this stage. So we want many ideas for now. So living alone making the vaccines, we can also mix some multivitamins in the feeds of chickens so that they can boost their immunity as to avoid the diseases. That's what, that was also one of the ideas we had. Okay, uh, coming up with a vaccine. Doesn't it need a lot of science and technology? They can start now, but they may take many years. Are you coming up with your own vaccine? Or you're going to use the vaccines that are already there? The business is on. Uh, we can make our own vaccine because if it was these vaccines that are already in existence, then that one would not be helping us. So we can make our own vaccines like yesterday when we had some of our members telling us that they can use 
ginger and mix with something. They can get some spray. So for us, we can also come out with our own vaccine. Okay, they are trying to come up with their own vaccine. Yes, the next group, let's clap for them. Uh, let's have the next agriculture group. Okay, right. Uh, Nathan Chingura, my name is. Thank you so much. Uh, this is agriculture. Uh, mostly we are called ANTI agriculture farmers. Uh, for us, after our survey out there, we interviewed many people in their businesses and we came to see that uh, the major Dakota incidences they are facing now is pests and diseases. Uh, so we as the team uh, members, uh, we sat down and we discussed on this issue because it is, ramp it is, it is the most rampant um, among these uh, business men and women. So uh, as a group, we have uh, integration, we have manure, we have traps. What am I trying to mean? Uh, since we have different kinds of pests, like you have, uh, even we men, we can be a pest, even rats. So we are considering on, on these rats. We are going to put uh, these good traps to trap the rats. Then uh, another problem is uh, this manure. How? When the soils are not, uh, they are not manure, or there is no manure in the soils, uh, it will it will cause some some pests. So what are we going to do? We as uh, agriculturists, first and foremost, yeah, we shall do what we call compost. What do I mean? We are going to make those soils to be fertile by formulating or by forming a compost manure. Then secondly, we shall go. We shall do what we call by the way, it is already in the process because we are, first of all, we are agriculturists, so we have already started. So we are doing integration of uh, pest and disease control. How? Since there is this this pesticides around, but we as we as agriculturists, these pests they are not working for our businessmen down there. So we are going to come with our own pesticide. How? We are going to use uh, garlic, ginger. We mix it with what we, what we want to use to form our our own come up with our own uh, pesticide. So we as team uh, NTI agriculturists, we are coming up with our own solution. Since since they say in quotes, we are the solution. I said big submit. Thank you. Thank you. So they have good solutions. They are thinking of their own pesticide and their own manure. So you have to study, you have to make research, make sure that yours has an advantage. It's better than what we already have. It may be cheaper, it may be, may be more efficient. Next group, retail. Uh, thank you. This is a representative of retail dealing. Uh, we, I'm, pre I'm representing the innovators dealing in retail. So I would like to, to bring this to your attention that in Mbarra, the retailers are struggling with customer retention leading to a decline of business sustainability and pro profitability, compounded with issues of product expiration, theft, bad debts, and price fluctuation. Uh, when we try to see through those problems they are facing, we saw a core problem in those problems as price, uh, a core problem of failure to maintain customers or customer retention and this is bringing it is leading to expiring of products in the shops 
just because the customers are not coming to buy them. And so we have come up with a solution for that problem, which is creation of a business platform through websites that is going to link the product, uh, the customers with the main uh, with the main producers, which will create a uh, su supplying of products. The or, uh, the already made products that will not pass through markets that will not spend a lot of time on the in the market which will reduce expiration uh, product expiration and it will bring connection between the retailers and the customers create awareness to the customers on which the on which products do they need and their types of course customers are going to come to buy some products from the retailers just because they don't know the products they are selling and they don't know the they know their they don't know their prices and we have seen that through this website we shall create awareness between the suppliers the customers and the producers so with this we shall solve a lot of problems we had thought of creating signposts but that is not enough so you have one solution so far which other solution did you think about on the solution uh solutions the first solution i have told you is creation of a website that will connect all of them then the second solution is uh designing of signposts that is go that are going to advertise the retailers products and we put them on the they are on the roadsides then the second solution was uh uh doing a house house trading like carrying their products to to consumers to consumers to customers that will create a market and need to uh buying of their products which will reduce expiring of the products in the shop. Okay, thank you. Let's clap for him. Let's clap for the group. So they are thinking of coming up with a website so that retailers can either sell as the internet or moving products from house to house so that they can easily get customers instead of waiting for customers to come to their shops. Next, tourism. Yes, tourism. Tourism, where are we? Good afternoon, members. Uh, for the sector of tourism, as we went to the field, we found that they have a problem of in, in, the problem in entertainment, whereby this problem around Barra there are no or little sites or places of entertainment, whereby most people out from outside. They want to tour around, to check, to see, to tour, to adventure on things of culture. So on that problem, we came up with a solution. We as the tourist sector, we came up with a solution of creating a culture center whereby in that culture center, there will be how people showing how the Banyankole dressy, the Baganda, the Banyaranda, those traditional wares and traditional materials like drums, you know them, you understand them, the, those people earlier used to cook food from. We also plan to set up, a, to, to start a cultural dancing troupe whereby they will be entertained through different traditions, the Banyankore, 
you know, we go for a Chitagu road, the Vanyaranda, like that. So, we also came up with an idea of always preparing the culture meals in that culture center so that we can improve, we can solve the problem of entertainment in the tourism sector. How many solutions? There were three solutions. One, culture center, culture group, and preparing cultural meals. Okay, let's clap for them. That's tourism. Uh, let's look at uh, finance. Yes, finance. Thank you. Good afternoon to you all. So, we are the team next level. And when we, yesterday we faced this, we got these challenges whereby we, we got insecurity, need, for, need a lot of money for capital, high taxes charged, too much risks and competition. And possible solutions to the to do, to the work on the challenge of insecurity, we have to form cooperative, creating a cash base, providing loans at a site lower interest, intended to faster development for mobile money attendance. Then, from there, the problem, the core challenge we got was insecurity. You know, when you are keeping money, when you are dealing with things concerning money, you are ever insecure. So, we came up with that mobile money attendants are currently facing a core challenge of insecurity because whenever those people have cash, mostly like in the evenings after work, they have cash money on themselves. They become a target for robbery and theft. As they carry large sums of money to their home places since banks are usually closed, very early. So, when we are going to solve that problem of insecurity, we found out that we can start cooperative like circles and you find that we keep that money for, we keep them, we keep their money like for a short period, whereby when you are owning that, that circle, you find that when you are keeping that money like for some time, you are using that money to invest do some your own, do your own work and after when that period is over you find that you're giving them back their money and that is development so i want to thank you uh, thank you clap for them uh, how many solutions are those how many solutions did you request We have three solutions. The first one, forming cooperatives. cooperatives is one. Creating a cash base. A cash. Keep the money. Providing loans. As, as the site is lower. Providing loans. So it's all around a circle. One solution. Okay, let's go to manufacturing. Good afternoon, 
Uh, we had a manufacturing team. As we went out, we we were able to listen to the to the problems they had. So we managed to come up with solutions. So the the core problems they have number one, they had thieves. So for the thieves, we managed to, if at all we can, bring drones near to people because people know that drones are only for parties. That's what people think. But then, if we can be able to manage the drones, you bring it to someone's workshop at night, you can be able to capture whatever is happening. We see the people who are stealing from them. Such that if we get those thieves, they can be taken to prison and we can have security. People can be able to keep their things safe. Then another core problem they had was limited customers. Why? Because people, the reason why they have limited customers is only one. It's because they don't have, they do not market their products. And how do they come to market their products for us? We have come up with a solution that if at all we can market digitally, we can, we can do digital marketing, we can create an app. If we can create this app, we can be able to market people's products. And if we market the products people can order, it becomes a win-win situation for both of us. We win, they also win. Digital marketing. If at all you see a product, you order, people get to know what to know the quality, and we can bring them, you can deliver it to the people. It is a win-win situation for both. So those were the core problems we had. Thank you for listening. Yes, thank you. So you're looking at two problems. Yes. So that core problems for them are two, and they have solutions for the two uh, problems. The first one is about uh, security. They are planning to bring drones or mobile cameras to be able to help uh, capture pictures maybe at night. Then the second one is about customers. So they are planning to do some marketing for businesses so that they get customers. Are we going to keep with two or you'll choose one? Uh, we shall see that later. Construction. Yes, real estate and construction. Morning, guys. Uh, I'm by name of Katobia Mkama Alex. I'm in the construction sector. So we tried to go and move in some building companies. We found that the major core problem was labor, shortage of labor. So they used to hire to employ people using human labor, both skilled and unskilled. But for us, at that prob it was not a right solution. We, had, we tried to think more critically. We found that they should prov we should, if I was the one, oh, oh, we can set up a business of these plant plant equipment of building of building companies like these mixers so that we be hiring to those to those building companies another thing is training training people so that they acquire when when you train them they keep in your company when those companies are coming to get looking for labor you give them trained people. Hence, you are gaining, they also gain labor. Another thing is, they had a problem of materi material, like bricks. Bricks are, are, of not, are of different sizes, and some of them are not on high standards. So for us, we decided that we should make 
a business of bricklaying. Like we go there down or Nyamitanga Valley, we start there bricklaying, which is on a high standard and good quality. Rather than going and they go to purchase these concrete bricks which are expensive. So for us, we decided to go and start up a business of bricklaying in clay soil, which was of a good quality and it is locally available. Thank you. I greet you all. Me am talk on real estate. Uh, in real estate, we found that all people in Uganda have a problem of land title conflicts. Land title conflicts, these are brought up by unclear property boundaries, competition of land, where you find that the land has scarce population, so it is in competition. The existing solution they told us in field where land title registration, this this is the informal record of land ownership. Another existing solution we had land title insurance. But we as a group, we have a relevant insight of introducing a website of blockchain based land title system. You can ask yourself how does blockchain based land title system works? This it utilizes a decentralized ledger where each change in land ownership is recorded in a block. These blocks are linked together in a chain, creating a transparent and a temper proof of all land title transactions. Uh, in this system, you can ask how can you as an entrepreneur gain income in this system. So here are the ways that we can make money we as an entrepreneur, increasing efficiency and reducing costs associated with traditional land title registration process. We have maintain, maintenance and support service offering maintenance and support service for broke chain based land title systems can be a source of revenue. That's what we chose as a relevant insight in our group. So uh, thank you. So they focused on real estate, then construction aside. And they are trying to use technology to come up with a system that is hard to tamper with using blockchain technology. Uh, these ones are trying to hire out construction machines and also to make bricks that are of high uh, quality. Let's go to hospitality. Do we have people in hospitality? No? Harris? Thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon, members. I'm Beg Mr. Junior presenting for the health sector. For us, we have managed to come up with the core problems uh, of two, two sides. We have inadequate health facilities. Here, we have come up with a solution that being available with our own mobile beds in case bedding facilities are needed for patients higher. So we can be available with our own mobile beds when beds are over in the hospital so that the patients can hire our beds for on, on an affordable price. Then another solution on that come up with our with our mobile app for heresy access, education, and monitoring. So that when a person falls sick, he can monitor and get educated through his mobile phone or her mobile phone and get access to his heresy so that we can reduce that congestion and the overcrowdedness 
They are at the hospital where you can also get unexpected diseases. Then another, another problem is inadequate food supply, especially where we went for sympathy. We found that in most especially in the private sector, private hospitals, you find there are patients, there is no any supply of food. Hotels are very far, so patients, they have to travel to look where to get the food. So for us, we have decided that we can establish food supply business, like small, small houses. You construct your small house nearby the hospital and you start supplying the patients there in the hospital and you reduce on the journey moving from hospital to go where there is food. Another solution, supplying packed food. We can pack our own food using the standardized packing materials or packing facilities and we start supplying in the hospital so that people can get that service without going very far looking for the food. Thank you. Clap for so they have many solutions. At the end of the day, they will have one that they will go with and present tomorrow. We are meaning with which one? Energy. Have we heard from energy? So we are meaning with others. Do we still have others? Uh, good afternoon, guys. Um, the, we are on the others group. That's security. We are taking the security side, and we talk to couple, couple, couple people for some, some of their problems they normally face in their daily life. Uh, we talk to Nira. We talk to the po policemen, and we talk to the guards. But most, most especially, we talk to the guards. Because the policemen, maybe they are handled by the government in upper hand. Then we try to talk to these Omuntu Wawansi. So we got to talk to them and we found out some, some of their problems. Some of their problems were uh, low payments uh, while working overtime. Uh, some other things were like delayed payments. And uh, some other people we tried to talk to were like the drivers, because we were like touching more security and securing their information, or maybe in terms of their safety for their documents. So we tried to talk to everyone, like most of the civilians even. So we talked to some of them, and they told us about their issues concerning security, how they secure their things. Let's say their documents, their line titles, uh, their permits, their national IDs. And what they told us, one of them was like, actually, he lost one of, okay, lost his license, his trading license, the things that they normally do. Okay, let's say when you're going for a town council or maybe going for the uh, municipal offices, they have to ask for, they have to ask for their documents. They usually get from you. And we try to understand that most of the times they shouldn't move with them. Rather than moving with them, they should keep with us because we are having a, a thing called a document protection service. We keep your documents, maybe your ID or maybe your driving license. I may ask one of the ministers here to just show me the, okay, his or her driving permit and he has just maybe forgotten it at home. So we have some security protocol that we are going to follow.
front of you it's a sasa waka cool derek it's a sasa waka cool derek i'm presenting for energy and environment for us uh, our sector is very big but we've decided uh, to take like part of electricity and as yesterday we went for research uh, we found the big problem within those people who are using electricity was a uh, reliable power supply by the service providers here i mean umeme and uh, which is disrupting their work and disturbing them like you find most of them we visited the saloon men uh, where you could find he's cutting someone's hair and the umeme goes off uh, which disrupts him and uh, maybe he has no alternative source of power so for us we've came up with some of the solutions about that problem uh, one is uh, designing the appropriate solar systems of according to whatever to whatever need of uh, the power it is that is one point another one uh, those people who use electricity mostly for cooking you find they don't have these uh, they don't have these uh, local kitchens you find they use electricity for cooking so we decided that uh, like uh, one of our projects we do a biogas project that is another proposal lastly it's uh, if they do afford we have another third priority which is uh, installing like generators systems according to whatever need it is going to be used so those are the three solutions to the above problem but uh, with my group we have the best we'll be talking to you thank you Is there any other group or are we done? Any other group? Okay, we are done. Uh, thank you to all the groups. You have come up with all these ideas, these solutions to the core problems that you the core problem that you identified. Okay. Now what what we are moving we have so far done the three steps. We are now moving into the last two um, steps of design thinking. The last two steps are prototyping and testing. And then we are going to be done. Now, what this means, with all these ideas that you have come up with, we need to get one. I'll say that again. With all the ideas you have come up with, we need to get one that we can practically use and finish up with. Okay? Now, also that is going to have the coming of the group and say, which one can we use? Because now we can't use all of them. All of you have three, some people have four. We can't use all that. We are going to all decide on one. That's what we're doing next. When we decide on that one, we're going through a phase of prototyping and testing. Zef is going to take you through that phase. Okay, It's going to happen after lunch. Of course, we're now on our lunch break. We're we are supposed to stop now and continue at 2 o'clock. But what we are going to be doing this afternoon is we are going to start identifying one solution, one. And then we are going to work with that one. In our groups, again, we are going to work with that one to understand what prototyping is. Using that one to move with that solution, and then even we try to test it. And tomorrow, you're going to be presenting everything with that one solution, but you need to get a solution which is practical, which you can implement. You can't say we are, because some people's solutions, I saw they were, okay, they are good, 
but you cannot practically implement them. Not all your solutions, yes? So you need to identify one which you feel that this is the one we can do. If someone gave you money, what can you do? If, if, if there was an investor who was ready to give you money, which one solution would you go with? But that decision has to come from you. We do not, we are not going to interfere with that. You need to tell us which solution you would do. If I gave you money, implement that solution. Which one would you use? Okay? So that phase is going to happen after lunch. We are going to go through prototyping. Prototyping is using that one solution and getting a minimal viable product. We are going to explain to you what that means. But I, I, I want you as you go for lunch to start thinking of which one do we want. Because that's very important. You have to, the, the one you pick is the one that can make or break your business. If you, make a, if you pick a solution which is not practical, it will probably die. So we don't keep brainstorming. We're going to leave you to go for lunch. But keep talking about which one should we go for. That's what I want you to start thinking about. Which one solution should we move with? So, of course, I know you're all hungry, you're tired. So, of course, we're going to stop here for now. Uh, we are going to, I know the rain has disorganized us. Uh, uh, okay, so they have informed me that, uh, they have informed me that our lunch is ready. So we are going to go for lunch. We give ourselves another 45 minutes. By 2 o'clock, we come here. When we come here, I want us to be ready with that one solution. That's where we're going to start from. That one solution, and we're going to go into the last two steps of design thinking. Okay? So, uh, you want to say something? Yeah, I want to say something about uh, what we are going into. Uh, tomorrow we have judges who will come to look at your ideas and to look at your prototypes or your products. So you will be competing tomorrow. Uh, some groups will come up uh, with the best. So make sure that as you come up with your prototype or as you think of which idea, you know that it makes business sense. You can convince uh, people who are not here in the training that this is a good business. It will solve a certain big problem and make money. So we are focusing on solving a big problem with an innovative solution so that we can make money. So the judges are coming tomorrow. How many judges do we have tomorrow? About five, about three. So we shall get people, business people, to come and listen to you. So more about the prototype. A prototype is like the product, but not yet the real product. You bring a sample, it could be physical. Uh, let's say that people who want to hire machines, they could come and show us some machines. All those who want to make bricks, they could come up with some bricks and say this brick is very standard. Or you could just write on a paper and draw. This is how our website will look like. Or you could buy some material and say, uh, this is our something. Is that okay? Okay, we shall add on that after lunch. So, my, my friends, we, I need to emphasize this more and more. We need to be convincing. Because tomorrow, the judges he's talking about, who are going to be three, are going to come. These people are business people. Now, what I want you to think about is how are you going to convince if the judges are people who are, they, they give you marks based on how convincing you are. So that idea, the idea you've been thinking, those solutions, and the, it comes from there. You have to think about something that when you're convincing me, if I was a judge, if I was a person who was going to give you money, you have to be convincing enough 
that I will give your team money before this other team. And that's how they are going to get the winners at the end of the day. So pick up something which is very practical, which if you convinced me, I would give you money to do it. Does that make sense? So the people who are going to call have never listened to you. You're going to convince them for the first time. That's why we have been telling you, first, you will talk about a problem that is in the community. You talk about that solution that you're talking about. And you convince someone to invest in your team. So the guys will give us marks based on how convincing we are. So keep thinking about that. That's what I'm saying. Pick up that viable solution. So who's going to pray for us as we go for our lunch? Who's ready? Let's let's change things. I want this man, Haji, to pray. In his sorry, sorry, sorry. Let him change. Awan the Bilay Minash Tran Rajim, Bismillah Rahman and Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbin Alameen, A Rahman and Rahim. Malik Yaumi Din, Iya Kanabu Dumaiya Kanastain, Idina Surat and Mustaqim, Sidatul Ladina na Amta Alaihim, Gairin Magdubi Alaihim, Waradlah. Amin. knowledge of creating a one page business plan now we are going to create this business plan and this is one of the things that you will be using to present tomorrow before the judges so you need to understand it very well are we together so it displays the entire business idea that you have each and everything that you need will be on this one page and this is the one page you're going to present okay I want to give you an example using an example of some of you people some of you are into building and construction okay to be able to build a house what must you have a building plan Thank you very much. Okay? You must have a building plan. What is entailed on a building plan? What, what, what is a building plan? Can you come and explain? Believe in yourself, my friend. Come and we teach, we teach together. So tell me what is found on the business plan. And uh, just to... To educate us, okay? Whenever you have a microphone, hmm, don't put it on the mouth. Because when you put it here, we don't hear you. Be vumbeira. Hold it and don't hold it 